My beloved brothers and sisters, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has favored us with a beautiful day known as the Friday. The Friday is the best day from the days of the week for the Muslimin. In it, we worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in a unique way. And on this particular day, there is an hour that we don't know exactly what time, but we are taught that during that hour or during that time, any supplication that one would make would actually be answered by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So on a Friday, make sure that you continue to call out to Allah with whatever your needs are throughout the day. Make sure that you are not asking for something prohibited and make sure that you are not asking for something wherein which there is destruction of relationships. Rather, the building of relationships and that which is positive and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will definitely grant it to you by his will, his favor, his mercy and his kindness. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless every one of us. May he protect us from disease and sickness. My brothers and sisters, not all the days are equal in terms of spirituality. Similarly, not all the times of the day are equal in terms of spirituality. When it comes to the most blessed time of the night, we know that it is the last third wherein Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala calls out to us saying, who is seeking forgiveness that I can forgive him? Who is asking me that I can grant him and so on. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us from his favor that we can get up and forsake our beddings at that particular time, calling out to Allah for our needs. Many of us complain of how difficult life is. We complain of anxiety and so many other things. Yes, we are human. But Allah says, call out to me. And then he tells us which times he expects us to call out to him where it is more likely that we will get what we want. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us ease. Today, I wish to highlight one of the most blessed and most powerful acts of worship. You and I know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has prescribed upon us the five daily prayers known as as salah The term as salah does not translate as prayer, but the word prayer is probably the closest to try and explain the term salah. Because if we were to say prayer in the English language, and if I were to ask you to pray, people who don't know would probably supplicate and engage in what we know as dua, which is also called prayer. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us an understanding. But I'm referring to the five daily prayers that start with a beautiful intention and then the words Allahu Akbar, raising our hands and placing them where Allah has instructed us to place them and then ending it with Assalamu Alaikum wa Rahmatullah on the right side and so on. So that is a salah. It is by far one of the most important acts of worship, but within the salah, there is a certain position that is by far the loftiest, the most loved by Allah, the highest position considered the position wherein which the son of Adam, meaning humankind, would be the closest to his Lord, subhanallah. Aqrabu ma yakunul abdu li rabbihi. The closest that a worshipper could be to his Rabb, to his Lord, is, what is it? Wa huwa sajid. The, the position of sujood, prostration. When you put your head on the ground for Allah in a specific way during the five daily prayers, there is no position that can be closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala than that in terms of a worshiper trying to gain that closeness to Allah. So my brothers and sisters, let's talk about it. We know that Iblis, the devil, when he was asked to prostrate to Adam, that prostration was not a prostration of worship, but it was a prostration of acknowledgement of the status of Adam. May peace be upon him. Although it has become prohibited to prostrate to anyone or anything, for whatever reason it may be, 
Even if someone says, well, I am prostrating, but my intention is not worship. We as Muslimin believe that that would be prohibited. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us protection from engaging in any act of worship or in any position posture that is displeasing to Allah when engaged for someone else or to someone else. So sujood is solely for Allah, only and solely for Allah. That is one act of worship that he has given us as a gift. And in the Sharia that we follow, the set of rules and laws that we follow, given to us by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, through Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, we were taught that it's absolutely disallowed. We're not allowed to engage in prostration except for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, no matter what the reason is, even if it is cultural, it still is prohibited to prostrate in the same way you would be prostrating in sujood for anyone or anything else. So Iblis did not engage in that prostration. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that he was arrogant. He did not obey our instruction. And therefore he was accursed. And at the same time, he was removed from the goodness he had. And he suffered the consequences is still suffering the consequences and will suffer the consequences. May Allah protect us. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us how we should be prostrating. And this comes from the blessed lips of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He says, Umirtu an asjuda ala sab'ati a'zumin al-jabha wa ashara bi yadihi ila anfihi wal yadayni wal rukbatayni wa atarafi al-qadamayn. He says, I have been instructed to prostrate upon seven bones. The forehead, the forehead, that is the top part of your head. And he pointed to his nose because that's considered one bone. It's part of your skull. So that is one bone that must be on the ground. So part of your nose and your head. Then he pointed or out the hands and he pointed out the knees. And he pointed out the tips of your toes, subhanallah. So the tips of your feet, meaning your toes, your knees, your hands, your palms, as that makes six. And then your skull made up of your forehead as well as part of your nose. That is the most complete way of prostrating for the sake of Allah. No other bones should be on the ground besides that. And that is what you call a sujood for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Similarly, I just mentioned the hadith where the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, Aqrabu ma yakunu al-abdu li rabbihi wa huwa sajid. The closest that a worshipper is to his Rabb is when he is in the position of sujood and prostration. That is the position. It is the only position wherein which man can get his head below his heart comfortably and still worship Allah, praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Why do I mention the heart? Because the heart has to pump oxygenated blood to the brain. And usually when we're standing or sitting, the brain is above the heart in terms of gravity. And therefore it requires a little bit of an effort. But when you're in sujood, there is no effort that is required to that level. In fact, it becomes much, much easier for the oxygenated blood to get to the brain. May Allah grant us goodness, good health and comfort. May Allah also make it easy for us to prostrate. Take your time in prostration, my brothers and sisters. Thank you so much for listening to the short message. I pray that it has increased you in a little bit of motivation and hope and the same applies to all of us jazakumullah khair assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh